What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Guna Channel, a channel 100% dedicated to the Arsenal, who, as we all know, are by far the greatest team the world has ever seen. And I'm still smarting from the 2-2 defeat to Spurs. And I am calling it that because it's what it feels like. Let's be honest, everyone's felt like this was a defeat. I know Spurs fans are delighted and it's just proven what they've been saying for the last few weeks, that they are going to win the Premier League. Deluded.com. However... One of the big reasons I isolated, and I did a video on this, uh, about Eddie Nketiah. In the game itself, he had that one shot where he probably should have squared it to Vieira. And then six passes throughout the whole game and gave the ball away eight times. He wasn't just peripheral, he was missing. And today I read that Ian Wright had shared the same opinion. I think there is a point where you get to with any player, however much you love Hayland graduates, however much you want one of our own to do well, you do have to accept that of the top tier teams, we are the only one without a real goal scoring striker. I love I love Jesus. I know we all do. And I think that the way he played on the left, I, I thought his had he only taken that chance that he nicked off Madison. But we know this about him. He's not exactly clinical in front of goal. And I think that it's important for every team to have that one player who is determined and hungry just to score goals. An Ian Wright-style striker. We know that Erling Haaland's that for Manchester City and Mo Salah is that for Liverpool. I think Isaac's a great signing for Newcastle, even though he's having a bit of a wobble at the moment. I want us to be the kind of team that has at least got someone on the bench that we can throw on. I think Rasmus Hoyland is that for Man United at the moment, but it's still too early to see. And you can kind of see from the amount they spent on him that actually replacing Eddie Nketiah and going out and buying another striker, it's an easy thing to say, isn't it? We need to go out and get a striker. But it is difficult because there just aren't as many around as there used to be. So what I thought I'd do is instead of just endlessly complaining that Eddie's not good enough, I thought I'd give us some options to look at and also discuss... Well, those players that are routinely linked with us, in whom I don't have a lot of faith. And the first one I just want to get out of the way is Ivan Tony, Because as we know, he is suspended at the moment back in January. Thomas Frank gave a very open interview about the fact that it looks like he might be sold. And so in January, he may well be moving clubs. Apparently, it's about a 60 million price tag. And that makes sense when you think that there are very few players who scored 20 goals in the Premier League last season, even if six of them came from penalties. He's definitely a goal scorer. He is, however, slightly older than Mikel Arteta and Edu have been looking at. Doesn't quite fit for me, partly because he likes to play off the left, partly because Brentford's style of football is different from ours. And... I do wonder if he would come in and score the goals that we need him to. Having said that, he's unquestionably an upgrade on Eddie and Ketia. So I think I'd be prepared to, to see how that one went. But I'm not massively blown away by it. Not keen on it, really. And I, I think it just comes down to, as I said, his style of play. But also, is his temperament an issue? I don't know the player, so I can't really speak to that. But let's say we don't go for Ivan Tony. Well, who else is there out there that we could go for? And just to cover off a couple of the others that we're constantly linked with, and the one I really don't understand, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, always mentioned when uh, the conversation of strikers coming to Arsenal comes up. But he's hardly a gold machine. He's got a history of injuries. Do we really need another injury play player? No. So I don't get it. Tammy Abraham less talked about now but there was a point where Mourinho was talking about how he should be playing for England he's a fantastic striker and I think for me that kind of smacks of well let me put it to you this way I wouldn't buy a used car of Mourinho I kind of think he wants to sell him his goals have dried up uh, he had that very good spell and nothing since so there's been less talk about Tammy Abraham the other one that uh, has well, it seems like a year and a half we've talked about it, and it's Vlavic, Dujan Vlavic. Now, when he first went to Juventus, there was huge fanfare, and it didn't really work out. But I think he's he's taken a season to get involved. He is back amongst the goals right now. I don't know how much it would cost to get him, but I think it would be over the 60 or 70 million mark. So he would be expensive. And it's not like he's the kind of versatile player that Arteta likes. He is very much a centre-forward. And maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need a goal-hungry player. 
But my biggest drawback with Ravic is that he has never shown any inclination in wanting to join us. And so this one might just be a little bit unrealistic. Now I'm getting into the realms of players that I quite like the look of, but haven't really been mentioned when it comes to Arsenal signing a striker. And the first one of those is Jonathan David. Plays at Lille. Finished above following Balogun in the goal-scoring chance in league uh, last season. And look, on the subject of Balogun, uh, I know I kind of wanted us to keep him just to see how it would work out. But I'm frustrated because he left us to get regular first-team football. Isn't starting for Monaco and isn't playing all that well either. So maybe we did exactly the right thing in selling him. It's pure profit after all. But Jonathan David probably is a little bit of a step up. He's certainly a step up on Eddie and Ketia, And I'm surprised he's still at Lille, to be honest with you. I would imagine that given he is at, I think he's 24, he might only be 23. He's at that kind of age where he's starting to attract interest. 50 million, I think, would get Jonathan David. And he is a goal-scoring centre-forward. Now for one that I'm personally attached to. I'm a bit of a Red Bull Salzburg fan. And if you're in the market for a striker, there are a few better clubs in the world to go shopping in than Red Bull Salzburg. After all, they did have Erling Haaland and Sadio Mane. And, well, the one for me there at the moment is a 19-year-old Ivorian, Karim Kanate. He definitely is amongst the goals. He's a proven goal scorer. All right, in the Austrian Bundesliga, it's hardly... But then, as I'm saying, you know, players start off in lower divisions and move up. He's still mouldable. Maybe he's not quite the kind of player that Arsenal normally go for. I, I'm flagging him because I think he's one to watch. In a recent friendly against Inter Milan, he scored two, missed a penalty for a hat-trick. But he took his goals really well. I, I think he's one that you should give a quick look at on the highlights reels. He is still very young, so it's not a very long highlight reel. But he is, for my money, already as good as Eddie Nketiah and he's years younger than him. So maybe he's the kind of player you bring in. It's doubtful that he would have the instant impact and he is a bit of a risk. But, you know, I'm putting it out there. I think he's he's a good player. Now, the next one, I think this one is exciting. I think that if you watch German football, um, you will know Yusuf Makoku, who's just moved down the pecking order at Borussia Dortmund. He's about the third place striker, but he has some goals in him, certainly as many as Eddie. Now, Bill, according to Bill, Dortmund are happy to accept between 30 and 40 million. So this is a steal. He's 18 years old and I think he has the potential to really do things. I think this would be the perfect time to go and get him. I mean, I thought, to be honest with you, the one I didn't mention that is really annoying me is Gonzalo Ramos, who went to PSG because he looked special and he started really well and we could have got him for around 50 million. We are going to have to spend some cash. But so for me, Canate, bit young, bit of a risk, shouldn't be too expensive. And Yusuf Mukaku. Definitely somebody that people are keeping their eye on. And I'm sure we've had a look at him. Maybe these, maybe the stats don't add up. But for me, just using my eyes, I would say this is a kid that is definitely worth watching. So where are we up to? Who have I suggested? Um, the one, really, that would make the difference, I think. And and it's difficult as I say this, but um, it's Victor Osimhen. Now, Aurelio De Laurentiis, the Napoli chairman, uh, famously said that he was going to be playing in a Napoli shirt this season. Definitely looking like he means what he says when he actually said it would take an obscene amount of money to prize him away from Napoli. I can understand that. I'm also reticent to spend a huge amount of money that we probably don't have on a player. So, my final instead of Osimhen, who I would love to see come to Arsenal. really would. He's definitely got a goal in him. Um, but Eduard, the Crystal Palace forward, who had a terrible time under Patrick Vieira and didn't look it at all. But he started this season really well. He's Premier League proven. He's young. Could be somebody for us to look at. Whatever happens, though, uh, we do need a striker. And, and since we can't go and sign any of these players and we have the cup game coming up against Brentford tomorrow where I really don't know who we're starting. Eddie's probably going to start up front for sure. But 
I don't know what the lineups going to be. We do desperately need to rest some players. Fatigue injuries have started to really cost us already, and it is players playing too many games. You know, had a season with the World Cup in it. You had uh, international fixtures. We are kind of the victims of our own success, and and I think we do need bigger squads. Uh, that's a subject for another day. But Eduard could well be a player that I would see coming in. And, well, look, let me put it back on Arteta because he's the one who's dropped Ramsdale for because he wants competition in every place. One place we glaringly do not have competition is up front. So at least sign someone like Eduardo Conate to give Eddie a run for his money because I don't know what happened. I'm putting it down to nerves. I think he was just nervous against Spurs, but he was totally ineffective. And the fact that he stayed on the entire game is just bewildering to me as well. I think the the clamour to change Eddie is getting too loud to ignore. And part of the discontent amongst the fans is that we are calling things as we see it. And last season, you know, Arteta proved himself, in my opinion. He's definitely improved players. Could someone like Kanate or Makoku be the next player that he improves? Can he really improve Eddie and Ketia beyond where he is right now? And how long is it going to take if he can? Anyway, that's my uh, assessment of who's out there as a striker. Uh, Red Eye Guna, I want to say, uh, has also mentioned Memphis Depay, which I thought was a brilliant idea. We didn't go for him. He's doing well for Atletico again. And he would have been a bargain. Easily could have got him for around 20 million. Older player, eye for goal. I wouldn't I wouldn't be at all upset if he came in. Red Eye, well done for spotting that one. Let us know uh, in the comments if you've got any suggestions yourself. I would love to hear them. And uh, until I see you again, be lucky. Lots of love.